Playmates Toys held the Star Trek license between 1992 and 1999. During that time, they produced a number of electronic ships and playsets, including screen-accurate replicas of phasers and communicators. But it's their line of over 350 action figures that are best remembered by a vast and devoted community of collectors and creative artists, with enthusiastic collectors continuing to fill gaps in their collections more than three decades after their release. In the late 1980s, action figures were only sold through bricks and mortar toy stores, and it was during this period a brand new line of figures centred around Star Trek The Next Generation were released. Originally airing in 1987, this updated version of the classic 60s series inspired a new wave of Star Trek fans, and it wasn't long before toy manufacturers realised they could cash in on this new wave of popularity. Up to this point, Star Trek wasn't a total stranger to the action figure toy aisles. However, its appearance was only ever a sporadic one. For many fans, the 1970s Mego line still remains iconic to this day. Whilst in comparison, the lowly four figures released by Ertl for Star Trek III are far less remembered. Released in 1988 and produced by Galoob, these new figures were scaled to three and three-quarter inches, in line with the then contemporary industry standard as highlighted by the successful Star Wars figure range of the previous decade. Yet despite the massive success of the TV series it supported, these action figures, which were released in two waves, failed to catch fire with fans and collectors. Overproduction of some figures and underproduction of others mainly the aliens, was considered the primary reason why they failed to gain traction. In retrospect, former CEO of Galoob Toys, David Galoob, later lamented the company's approach in marketing Star Trek toys to children instead of adult collectors was the primary issue. Within a few years, the next generation had firmly cemented its place within popular culture, and it was here Playmates Toys entered the fray. Known mainly for their Dick Tracy and Ninja Turtle lines, this Hong Kong-based company was an already established player in the toy scene. After having advertised their products at key industry events and in sci-fi magazines, the first wave of all-new next-generation action figures appeared in stores in June 1992. Appearing just in time for Star Trek's 25th anniversary, and the 100th episode of The Next Generation, this set of 10 figures nicely represented the Enterprise D crew along with four iconic aliens. From the outset, these figures proved quite unique and appealing for a variety of reasons. As difficult as it may be to imagine, it was quite common for toy lines based on movies and TV shows to bear only a passing resemblance to the characters they portrayed. However, these new figures and the characters they represented were instantly recognisable despite having a somewhat cartoonish likeness. Sculpting for this line was divided between Steve Varner Studios and freelance sculptor Scott Hensley. For his part, Scott was already an established industry artist, having previously worked on the Ninja Turtles toy line. In addition to being an existing fan of the original Star Trek series, he specifically requested to sculpt the alien figures as opposed to the human characters. Initial sculpts were made of clay, followed by a mould cast in wax, at which point finer details to the figure were added. From here, the final prototypes were produced in resin. Even at this point, it was acknowledged by the sculptors that the aesthetic of the line was an essential ingredient in its success especially as many figures came with extreme action-oriented poses. One of the surprise mysteries of the initial wave of figures was William Riker who sported a torn uniform. This was allegedly a decision made by the Playmates marketing department who were responding to the then current trend of battle-damaged toys. 
In addition, blurry reference photos from Paramount resulted in Scott Hensey being loaned a screen-used wharf head by makeup artist Michael Westmore to ensure he could accurately depict the Klingon's distinctive forehead ridges. This wave of figures were released internationally, with only a couple of minor paint variations for the Ferengi and Klingon characters, along with packaging variants to suit specific markets. Alongside the action figures were a concurrent line of electronic ships and playsets, which continued to be expanded upon. In Germany, the figures were distributed by Bandai and came in a box instead of on a card. Even today, these versions are still highly sought after by collectors. By 1993, sales had exceeded expectations and it was clear the Star Trek license was a hit for Playmates. So to ensure their continual market growth and to capitalize on their success, the company soon released 23 new figures under the Next Generation banner. Many early versions of these new figures were displayed at a toy fair in 1993, including all new first and second season versions of Picard, Riker, Data, Worf, Geordi and Diana Troy. It was a clever move for the company, who could essentially create new figures simply by using a new paint scheme with minimal tooling. Alongside the visually impressive packaging were the striking Skybox cards, which offered fans a side collection to focus on. With the next generation now in its fifth season, Playmates took the opportunity to dig into the mythology of the Star Trek franchise to provide collectors with obscure aliens and aged versions of the original series crew. Later in the year, a box set containing all seven original series crew members was released. Limited to 150,000 sets, the first 10,000 featured gold foil lettering on the packaging. By their own admission, Playmates conceded the target market for these figures were children perusing the toy aisles and shops, despite being acutely aware that serious collectors wanted these items too. So in an attempt to capture this segment of the market, Playmates individually numbered their figures with a printed number on the foot of each figure. Needless to say, in the days before eBay, scalpers often demanded exorbitant prices for low-numbered figures whilst a number of venues offered subsets of figures, all with matching numbers. The exact number of figures produced by Playmates remains elusive, but for the first few years, numbers in excess of 300,000 were not uncommon. 1994 saw an immense outpouring of products, with their next generation line continuing to hone in on the show's popularity and expanding mythology. During this period, 21 new figures were released, including popular friends and foes of the Enterprise D crew, such as Lieutenant Barclay, Hugh the Borg, Ambassador Sarek, and Waxana Troy. Following on from the first and second season variants offered the year before, Playmates began creating versions of characters wearing disguises and alternate uniforms. Replacing the Skybox trading cards were space caps the Star Trek version of the uniquely 90s artefact, the Pog. As to be expected, combinations of figures with space caps rather than trading cards can be quite rare and are still quite valuable to this day. Among all the new figure variants were the Thomas Riker and Redemption, or the Red Data. This was Playmate's first attempt to manufacture some excitement among collectors by producing these two figures. As to be expected, the production of these figures was amazingly simple as they were already existing figures just with a new paint scheme and packaging. In total, there were only 13,000 Thomas Riker figures produced, with an additional 2,000 for the Canadian market, whilst the Redemption or Red Data was limited to 5,500 with another 1,000 for Canada. As they were only available to purchase via a JCPenney mail-order catalogue with three other figures, the redemption data is difficult to find on the secondary market and subsequently still commands a sizeable price. Materialising in time for the show's second season, the first dedicated wave of Deep Space Nine figures appeared in February of 1994. Depicting the crew in their early season uniforms, 
these facial sculpts set a new benchmark for character likenesses. As part of the marketing campaign for these figures, their release was supported by various print ads, as well as a television commercial featuring none other than Quark himself. Stylistically, these new figures were a far cry from the next generation designs, as they featured clearly restrained package artwork along with neutral character poses, which was Playmate's attempt to appeal directly to the collector sensibility. Somewhat ironically, it was Playmate staff who admitted that a sizeable portion of these figures were purchased by adults who simply want their favourite character to sit on their desk, which included themselves. Less collectible though, were the Generations line of figures released to coincide with the first Next Generation movie in 1994. Using the existing character sculpts, some of which had already been released twice, and concept art for uniforms that were ultimately unused, these figures remain a curious historical oddity. Explanations for the uniforms not being used in the film ranged from visible underwear lines to incorrect fit for the actors. Either way, Playmates produced figures based on the concept art for the film, which was necessary due to the long lead times required to manufacture tie-in products. In a 2015 interview, Costume designer Robert Blackman explained the unused uniforms were a perfect storm of unforeseen circumstances, which included ill-fitting fabric that never quite lived up to the potential of his sketches. The Generations line, however, did contain some genuine highlights. Among them, brand new figures of the Klingon Duros sisters, Lursa and Bator, and faithful renditions of Kirk, Scotty and Chekhov in their monster maroon uniforms from the film's opening minutes. In addition, Kirk was featured wearing a spacesuit, which was the one and only Star Trek action figure based on a deleted scene. Finally, an all-new engineering playset was released under the Generations banner. With movie-accurate sound effects, this playset was in scale with the main bridge released previously. As an example of the collaboration between Paramount and Playmates, Many figures contained competition entry forms, inviting kids and collectors to design an alien. After thousands of submissions were received, the winning entry by John Paul Lohner was chosen by Rick Berman, Michael Westmore and Robert Blackman. Lohner can be seen performing a non-speaking walk-on part wearing his character design, Runep, a Racinian ambassador, in the opening minutes of the Deep Space Nine season four episode, The Muse. With a small army of 4.5-inch figures, along with an array of 9-inch dolls, electronic ships and various other accessories, combining both accurate detail and great play value, Playmates had given Star Trek fans more product than any licensee had done before. But 1995 was set to be an even bigger year, with even more figures being unleashed from every corner of the franchise's history, as well as new characters from another brand new Star Trek TV series. Indeed, the human adventure really was only just beginning. <laughs>